Hi everyone, it's Nikki here. Welcome to my channel. For those who are new, uh, I'm an author and a freelance editor and I also post videos about books, films, TV and all the other things I love. Uh, which is why we're here today because it's the end of the month so it's time to tell you a little brief overview of some of the books I've been reading during April. So, kicking us off, um, a five-star read, Night Walking by Matthew Beaumont. This was a book that my mother bought me recently, um, just as a, a random gift. Um, it's been on my book depository list for a little while, and I'm so glad I got it because it's absolutely awesome. In fact, it might be here, one second. Yes, ah, there it is. Uh, so, uh, it's a brilliant non-fiction book, and in it, the author Matthew Beaumont um, takes us through the history of London um, as seen through a nighttime lens, I guess you could say. It's, um, well, it's, it's subtitled here, A Nocturnal History of London. And it's not just history um, and social history, it's also literary history as well, because a lot of the stuff that he talks about he does um, through the eyes of authors at the time who are writing about the night and walking around in the night. Uh, so it's a looking of ideas of obviously how um, the law changed towards people being out and about at night as well. The idea of night walking, um, whether people are up to no good, whether they are prostitutes. Um, fascinating read, really interesting history. Um, so definitely check it out, five stars. Next up was a net galley read and it's a piece of literary fiction and it was called Relapse, A Love Story. Um, it was about this author who is having these marital problems and it, it's written by Robert Hunter. I gave it three stars. Um, it's an average read for me. There were things I liked about it. Um, I liked the plot idea and I didn't dislike the characters. However, um, I just felt that it lacked focus overall. Um, it kind of just meandered through the story and I didn't really know where it was going and by the time we reached the end I was just sort of like okay then. Um, and I found it very hard to empathise with our narrator, um, the main character as well. Um, I did dislike him but I just never really cared about him or his problems enough to um, fully engage with him. Uh, next up was uh, my lowest scoring read for the month at only 2.5 stars and this was a book I got free on Kobo and it's called Tall, Dark and Lonely by R.L. Mathewson, and it's the first in a series, um, the, I think the Python Sentinel series, I think it's called. Uh, it's a take on vampires, um, with a bit of a twist, um, a bit of a sci-fi almost twist, I'd say. And the thing is, it wasn't well edited, I think was the, the major problem, um, both in terms of the prose, the grammar, but also in terms of the story, there are a lot of plot and character issues that a good editor would have been pointing out to the author and got the author to tighten up before it was published. Um, obviously that didn't happen. Um, there, there were too many plot holes. The plot started off being about one thing and then suddenly drifted into being something completely different. And the characters, um, they never felt very cohesive. They would react one way in one scene and then they'd react completely differently like a few chapters later. So I just felt it was a great idea. It just needed some really strong editorial support to bring it all together, which it didn't get. And the next book I got was also a free read. This one came from Project Gutenberg and it is The Diary of a Resurrectionist by James Blake Bailey, which I gave four stars. I was actually reading this one because one of my books that I'm just beginning to research for, that I'm hoping to get writing on soon, is um, going to have a resurrectionist as a character. So um, I found it a really useful resource. Um, I think the, the diary itself, maybe not so much, but the introduction to the diary um, was where I got most of my useful information that I'll be able to incorporate into my story. Next up was another net galley read. In the Garden of the Fugitives by Keredwan Dovi. I think I said that right, Keredwan, I think. Uh, four and a half star read for me. Uh, this is literary fiction. It's um, actually an, um, a letter-based uh, letter novel, which you don't see so much these days, but um, I really liked it. They were really intriguing character studies of these two characters who, um, one's an older man, um, one's a middle-aged woman, 
Um, they used to know each other, but there was a slight difficulty in their relationship in that he became quite stalkerish towards her and they broke off contact. So they've resumed contact years later and as they write to each other they're kind of using their back and forth letters almost as a, a kind of um, psychological exercise. They're ridding themselves of some of the demons from their past in talking to this this other person who, who they know but is kind of detached from them so they, they really open up about themselves. Uh, it, as I said, brilliant character study. Um, Again, I didn't feel this book, the reason this got four and a half, not five stars, was I didn't feel it really went anywhere, overall. Uh, at the end of the day, it was like, well, that, I was really interested in their characters and in how they were working through their past, but it didn't feel like there was a, a real plot other than that, uh, which is just what let it down for me a little bit. Next up is another NetGalley read, Writing Without Rules by Jeff Summers. This is a five star read for me, it's non-fiction. What I loved about this book, I mean I've read a lot of writing guides over the last few years and generally they fall into two categories, either they're only telling me things I already know or they're trying to preach to me a way to go about writing that I know just isn't going to suit me. What I loved about Summer's work is that he doesn't, he doesn't do that at all, I mean writing without rules is absolutely <laughs> the name of the game with him. He gives you lots of different options, the way different people might approach it, if you're a panster, if you're a plotter. And he just leaves it all up to you and says, look, these are some suggestions, but you've got to find your own method. Um, he's got some really insightful thoughts on the process of writing, and he's really funny as well. I mean, if you, if you read the book, do not skip the footnotes, because his footnotes are absolutely hilarious. So of all the writing guides or, um, I've read, it's actually, I think, one of the best. Uh, it's a really nice approach to being creative rather than saying you have to write in this way. And next up, another NetGalley read, For the Immortal by Emily Hauser, which I gave four stars. This is an interesting take on Greek mythology. Um, it's basically looking at uh, the Amazons. Um, it combines several Amazon-based stories into one character, that of Hippolyta. And uh, along the way she interacts with um, Theseus and Hercules and several other characters. Um, and as well as her narrative, we also get the narrative of another female character as well who's seeing things from a different point of view within the tale. Overall, I really enjoyed it. However, in some ways, I actually found the afterword even more fascinating than the novel itself, in which um, Hauser goes into how she approached the myths, how she decided what she was going to use, um, and I, I actually found that fascinating. Um, although I enjoyed the book, I, I almost like got more excitement from the afterword and le thinking about how she'd made her decisions and got about writing it. Next up, we have Gaming and IRL Boss Fights by Alina Popescu. Now, I received this book as a um, review copy from the author and I gave it four and a half stars. This is the third book in um, Alina's Famous on the Internet series. Uh, I've read and enjoyed the first two, and this third book was no exception. Uh, it's a really fun, geeky romance. Uh, you have the guy who's a uh, full-time YouTuber. He, he does videos and streams about gaming, and um, that's how he makes his living. And his new um, landlord, at first there's, there's some sort of sexual tension between them, and but then suddenly he becomes this evil landlord who hates the guy. and we gradually find out why during the course of the story and um, it is a romance so of course you can expect a happy ending by the time you get to the final page. Um, so a wonderful read, a great little um, quick gay romance uh, if that's your thing. Next up Miss Subway by David Duchovny is um, another uh, net galley read. Now obviously David Duchovny um, famous for The X-Files, and I knew he'd turned to writing, but I hadn't read any of his works, and so when I saw this one on NetGalley, I thought it was about time I gave one a try. It's a four and a half star read for me. It was great fun. It's a modern contemporary tale, but with a sort of paranormal twist in that it uh, uses myths as the basis for some of the storyline. Um, it was really amusing. I was laughing out loud. I loved the characters. And it, it would definitely encourage me to read more of de Coveney's writing in the future because I, I did find it a very enjoyable, easy read. 
Next up is an audiobook now. <coughs> You'll know that I don't um, what, listen to a lot of audiobooks and it has to be something special to make me do so. And this one was Better Than Life by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor and obviously it's, if you know your pop culture and TV, it is a Red Dwarf audiobook. Now this one picks up directly after Infinity Welcome's Careful Drivers, which I told you about in the March um, vlog when I went through what I was reading in March. Uh, the boys from the Dwarf are trapped in the highly addictive video game Better Than Life. And so that's where we meet them as the story starts. Um, the book goes on to um, get them out of that situation and then it runs through several other key um, moments that will be familiar to Dwarf fans such as um, playing pool with planets we have, um, meeting the polymorph and um, Lister getting marooned on an ice planet and lots of little things like there's, there's a lot of original material too but there are also some key scenes from the TV series that appear in the story. Um, I'm a huge Red Dwarf fan, so read by Chris Barry, who does everyone's voices so brilliantly. Five stars, obviously. The next book I read is another Net Galley read, and it is Modern Drawing by Chelsea Ward. Four and a half stars. This is an excellent um, overview of drawing um, in a traditional uh, manner. Both um, it uses a lot of different techniques and styles. So the book um, introduces all sorts of uh, different approaches um, from paint just to graphite pencil so there's something for everyone it's probably a really great introductory text if you want to get into art but you you don't really want to be committed to one particular technique or approach I guess when you're just starting you want to try different things this is a really good book to give you some inspiration for that and um, just to be a, a good starting block just to bounce off from and then perhaps go into more detailed study once you find the um, style that works best for you. Another net guy read, The Art of Map Illustration by Hancock, Hayworth, Hill and King. This is three and a half stars for me. I found it interesting but it wasn't quite what I'd expected. I kind of anticipated there would be a bit about fantasy map drawing and things which interested me as an author because if I write fantasy, I haven't done high fantasy myself yet, but if I do it's nice to be able to draw little maps of your kingdoms and things. However, it really um, focused more on street maps, so it's probably more aimed if you're, say, a travel blogger who is also keen on art and wants to do some quirky illustrations um, showing your recent trip and what parts of the city you visited or what parts of the country you travelled around. For that, it would be brilliant, but for the purposes of which I was interested in reading it, it wasn't so good, which is why it's three and a half stars for me. But if, if it's what you're looking for, then probably you would rate it higher than that because it, it was well illustrated, well laid out and um, plenty of really fun quirky examples. Next up is a book that I received from the publisher in a paperback um, review copy and it is Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. Now this is a YA fantasy dystopian novel. Um, I loved it. I, I gave it four and a half stars. Um, the only thing that put me off it is it had a really fascinating plot, um, some really wonderful characters. Uh, my favourite was Cern, who is the, the prince of the, um, I guess, the, the bad guys that have taken over um, Theo's kingdom. Uh, so his father is now the Kaiser, um, and he is the heir apparent. But um, it's quite interesting because his family, the, the, the aggressors, if you like, I, seem to be pretty much based on Teutonic and Scandinavian um, peoples. Um, I mean, his name Cern, his typical Danish name, for instance. Whereas um, the country they invaded, um, of which Theo was once the princess, her name, her real name is Theodosia. Um, so very Greek, Mediterranean kind of feel. Uh, the only thing that put me off the book that made me give it four and a half, not five, is the love triangle. Um, I don't know why there has to be so many love triangles. Uh, in YA, um, it just annoys the hell out of me. It's, it's okay if they're really necessary and they really advance the story, but in this case, um, we have Theo and Cern with this potential love slash enemy thing going on, and that worked really well, I loved that. But then Blaze, who's um, of Theo's race and who's trying to help her, came in, and there was this potential sort of half-hearted love interest thing that went on with him too. And that didn't really work for me because 
it wasn't necessary. He would have played his part perfectly well and there would have been an, enough to move the plot along with him just being a friend. Um, you didn't need that kissing and the love stuff going on. Um, I just wish that had been left out because in all other respects I thought it was a brilliant story. But despite that I would still loved it enough that I would definitely like to carry on with the book. Um, with the series I should say. I'm not sure actually. It doesn't say it's book one of however many. But the way it was left, I think there's got to be another book coming, maybe two more. So it'll be a duology or a trilogy. Uh, and I would definitely read more because I, I did like the story and I'd like to see what happens with, with CERN and with Theo. So, moving on, another NetGalley read, All That Remains, A Life in Death by Sue Black. This is a non-fiction book and it's written by um, Professor Sue Black, who is a forensic anthropologist. It was a fascinating read. Um, in different chapters she takes us through um, starting off in her early days of anatomy studies uh, in which she also describes in detail the decomposition of corpses. Um, she goes on to talk about her work as a forensic anthropologist um, where she's travelled to places like Kosovo um, and Thailand and it's really interesting. She talks about DVI, um, disaster victim investigation. Um, Really, really interesting work. So it, it look, it's kind of in some ways a philosophical look at death. How does she view death? Um, how does she approach it? But at the same time, it's almost like a um, sort of study of um, forensic anthropology, um, crime scene investigation, uh, and anatomy. So I, I actually think it's a really good resource for authors because, as I said, there's a um, great description of the DVI process, great descriptions of decomposition. So if you're an author who's writing crime, murder stories, this is probably a book you want to check out because there'll be a lot of really useful facts and that you'll be able to work into your stories to make them more realistic. Finally, Pocket Art Portrait Drawing by Miss Led, um, whose real name is Joanna Henley. I think I haven't written that down. I'm pretty sure it's Joanna Henley. Four and a half stars. Um, this is a, a little, I, I got this from NetGalley, so obviously I was reading it as an ebook, but it is a diminutive size book. Um, I intended to be slipped into your pocket and as such I think it's a really good guide if you're starting out in portraiture you want a little book with you as a reference um, that you can carry around easily and you're not lumbered with all these huge heavy tomes. The only thing that was missing for me is that it talked um, really well about face shape, um, feature shape, how to go about crafting eyes, noses. Um, the only thing it kind of, um, hair, the hair bit was really good I have to say because Hair's where I always, I, I like drawing portraits and hair's where I tend to struggle the most so I am going to try out a few of her techniques the next time I do a drawing. The only thing that was missing for me was I would have liked a little bit more on shading included in the book but that's a minor gripe. It was a really nice introductory text um, and it was four and a half stars from me. So that those are my April reads. I've actually got one more book that I probably will finish before the end of the month but as always I'm having to film this um, few days in advance so I haven't quite got through enough of it to talk about it in this one so I will bump that one over into May's video. I look forward to seeing you all again then when I'll have some more books read hopefully to share with you. Bye for now everyone!